Welcome back, YouTubers. Uh, I'm still a little bit sick today, so I'm going to try to struggle through this without coughing, but uh, we'll see how far we get. Uh, first thing I'm going to do today, I've got everything put back together and restrung. I've got most of it tested, um, so I'm going to work on setup. Uh, I'm going to start with neck relief because that will allow me to put my truss rod cover back on and just get a little bit further in the reassembly. So, neck relief. Uh, you want to put a capo on your first fret. And we're going to check neck relief by fretting a string at the 17th fret and then checking the space between the string and the 8th fret. I'm going to use my feeler gauges and I'm shooting for 12 thousandths. Alright, well that is not even close. <clears throat> So, need to let the truss rod loose a bit. You start by finding the correct wrench. Um, it's usually on an import guitar, either 4 or 5 mil. just depends. It can sometimes be a nut or you need a socket. This one is a uh, 5 mil Allen. Okay, so I've got it set to 12 thousandths. I had to loosen the truss rod nut several turns. Um, it's in a good spot now, and uh, I'm ready to put my truss rod cover back on. When you do this, you need the guitar tuned to pitch before you can adjust your neck properly. Uh, if you don't have it tuned to pitch, that's going to add neck relief. You know, whenever it, you know you go from being detuned to tuned so you need to be aware of that sometimes I have to loosen the middle two strings a little bit to be able to get my truss rod wrench in there to actually tighten things or loosen things because the you know the sweep bangs into the two strings that are you know uh, the, the three and the four strings in the middle here so you'll need to uh, potentially do that but just make sure when you're checking the actual neck relief that you tune those two strings back up so it's a lot of, you know, tuning up, checking, detuning, tighten, tune up, check, all that. Um, pain in the butt, but you got to do it. Okay, so I've got my truss rod cover reinstalled. Um, the neck is set up the way I want it. Um, normally I don't do this, um, but I just wanted to check the relief at the first fret, or the, the action at the first fret because this nut fell off and I glued it back in and I just want to see if it's off and you do that with a 20 thousandths gauge and you just check the string height over the uh, first fret and this one is way too high so I guess I'm going to be following the nut on this guitar one thing I will do is I'll try to rough in the action on the bridge before I actually work on the nut height. So I've said it before, but get yourself a string ruler gauge. This one is a pretty generic one, but you know I like it because it has a, a chart on it that tells me what the action is supposed to be at the 12th, at the 12th fret. So on a strat style bridge, there are Allen screws. Um, you, you just want to loosen those to lower the action. Remember to lower them equally so that 
the saddle is level with the bridge. When I'm roughing this in, I want to try to get the bridge floating roughly to where it should be, and it actually is. I I looked at it um, from the side, and I do have a little gap between the back of the bridge and the body of the guitar. Um, I, I may want to increase that a little bit later, but <clears throat> for uh, rough end purposes, I'm doing fine. And this is a big dance. Like, when I lower this down and I change the height of the nut, then this is going to be off again. And so I'll have to keep adjusting these things you know, as they affect each other. And I'll hopefully end up where I've got 20 thousandths at the first fret and no buzzing. So that's the ultimate goal. And I want the bridge to be floating just a little bit. Uh, you, you can, there's no rule of thumb on that really. If you, if you prefer your bridge to be sitting on the body, that's possible. Uh, some people totally block the bridge so it doesn't move. It's just up to you whether you play with a tremolo or not. Uh, if it's got one, I like to set it up to float just a little bit. I'm still a little bit over 80 thousandths here. Okay, well that's 60 on this E string. I'll just go down the line and just check the action. Um, the action gets lower the higher you go. So the action on the high E on this chart says 39 to 59, so just try to vary it accordingly, you know, going a little bit less each time. It's hard to get exactly right with one of these eyeball gauges, but they get you in the ballpark. And you want to adjust every single string because we're probably going to end up cutting every single nut slot. It's just, I think it's just a, a function of this being knocked off the guitar at some point and you know, adding glue, um, so necessary evil. As I'm doing this, I'm checking for fret buzz as I'm going along. If you're getting a lot of buzz in the 17th and higher frets, your action's probably too low. This guitar seems to prefer 80 thousandths or 79 thousandths a lot more than it likes 60 thousandths. So, that's where I'm at with this. Um, I think if I did a little bit of fret work in here, I might be able to get things a little bit lower. I can tell already that the 21st fret is probably a little bit lower than the 22nd. Uh, but that's the only place I've seen any issues with uh, any, any frets so far. Um, I've done the first three I'm going to keep going and do the rest of these three uh, the high strings and I'll be shooting for a little bit lower action on those but the process is the same. I'll cut the video here and come back when I've got the action set and we're ready to check the nut again. Um, you know I more or less finished up the build but after I finished it up there is definitely an issue with the action and I've got the neck relief set properly. The neck relief is at 12 thousandths at the 8th fret, like, you know, most of, most of the instruments that I've built and uh, adjusted. But the action on this, um, if you try to go down to 60 thousandths or 50 thousandths, you know, where a lot of my builds would be, you get a lot of buzzing, um, especially from like the 15th fret on up, probably 17th fret on up especially. And right now it's set at like 90 on this side and uh, something really high on this side. I think it's like 70 or 80. And it's still, even with that much action, it still has some buzzing in these end frets. 
and I've been doing some reading on this and I think I know what's causing it and it's that a lot of necks, bolt-on necks especially, suffer from a condition called rising tongue and it, it that means that the frets in this area and it's really not known why it happens. Some people theorize that it's because the end grain is exposed on a, on a bolt-on neck and it, it can absorb water and moisture but this last set of frets here starts to lift up and there's almost like a warp um, in the end of the neck. And I really can't confirm that right now. Um, well, I suppose I might be able to do something with a, a, an action ruler. We'll see what I can do. But, um, but just based on the way everything feels, I mean, I think that's what's going on. Now, luckily, there is quite a bit of fret material here. And so I think the way that I'm going to try to address this is I'm going to get in here and try to sand on these last few frets and see if I can't knock them down a little bit and then recrown them and uh, see if we can't get that action a little bit lower but I definitely have some dead frets like right in the middle here I think it's like the 19th or something was completely dead on one of these strings and up here on the higher higher strings they're buzzing all over the place but um, first step I gotta get the neck off and um, set the strings to the side and then we'll see what's going on you know with the with the neck okay I, I've got everything laid out here um, I'm just I'm trying to keep the strings I've it's silly, but they're new strings, so I hate to mess up, mess them up. Um, so right now, the way things look, I have a little bit of relief in this neck. Um, it's got a little bit of an up bow, and I'm not sure now if that's the rising tongue or if that's the rest of this. So let's play with the truss rod a little bit and see what we can do. So if it's got too much up bow, I need to tighten the truss rod. Okay, well, I'm trying a couple things. I've got a weird issue. Um, this fretboard does not feel worn at all, yet When I put a straight edge across the tops of the frets, right now, it appears that there's a slight back bow. And when I put a, a straight edge on the fretboard itself, it appears that there's a slight up bow. So, I don't know where to go with this right now. I think... Well, this is where I'm going to go. I think the best I can do is to put this thing in as straight of a condition as I can get it um, on the frets themselves and recrown and not worry about the straightness of the fretboard exactly. Let me first see if the fretboard will even go straight. It's a strange it's a strange condition so the fretboard itself right now is as close to straight as I can get it and I'm out of adjustment um, as in I don't have any more room to turn this I, I, maybe I do but I don't want to crank the crap out of it and maybe maybe break something but um, the frets are in like a what looks like a back bow I'm gonna take that to mean that these lower frets have wear on them and the upper frets don't and that's why 
I'm getting this slop up here. But because the neck doesn't have any more room to adjust for, um, you know, any more room to tighten, I think I'm going to loosen it back up, get the frets as straight as, the, as I can get them, and then uh, plane the neck and recrown from that point. And I think that's about the best I'm going to be able to do. If I if I straighten if I try to straighten this neck anymore, I'll have to do something in the truss rod. Like I'll have to add a spacer on the truss rod or something like that, and uh, I'll have to take a lot more off the frets. Whereas if I just straighten the frets and plane everything out from there, I'm not taking a lot of material off the frets themselves, and I think that's that's the direction I want to go. I tried to set it back to straight and realized that there was a big dip here uh, once I did that. So I, I really do think that there is a rise here that's counteracting a, a back bow that I've got in it currently. And that if I take more, if I continue to take more out, I bet that only gets worse. Take one more turn out. These last four frets are definitely a problem. Um, I've got to do something about those first. So let me get a marker and I'm going to start to take some off of these. Alright, well it's a little noisy in the shop right now, I'm sorry about that, but uh, I've got everything planed down. I, I, I spent some time with the dial fi diamond file on the end of the fretboard, got the, I don't know, probably 17th and down frets shaved down quite a lot, and then I've come back with the piece of oak that I've got set up with 280 on one side and 500 on the other, and I just planed the whole fretboard down as even as I could get it. There's quite a pronounced depression in the 14, 15, 16 area. Um, so the middle frets have gone down quite a bit and the end frets have gone down quite a bit. Not so much at the top, but they were already a little bit worn. Um, but I think I'm relatively straight now and I've just got to go about the process of recrowning. So same process, I usually take a marker, mark the frets, then go over them with the crowning file and um, make sure that you know most of the blue goes away as I'm crowning and then I'll come back and polish afterward and I uh, should be good to go so uh, anyway sorry again about the noise and I'm gonna get to work on this Alright, so I've skipped a few steps ahead, but I've got the frets all leveled and crowned out now. And I've reassembled the guitar. And, you know, I we already had the strings on there and everything. It's just a matter of bolting up the neck. So, after doing that, I adjusted the action just a little bit. And things are working a lot better now. Um, I didn't get all those notes before, so now I, I definitely have taken out some of the high spots. It's not perfect, and honestly, that's because the frets were not tall enough to really take a whole lot off of them. I think there's probably still a little bit of a dip in here, but it's it's not pronounced, and you know there there were some definite problems in here that are not near as bad now. Is this thing perfect? Probably not. Um, 
I don't think you could get it perfect without planing the entire neck, like taking the frets off, planing the neck, and then putting frets back in it. So, um, anyway, uh, this thing's in pretty good shape now. I think I'm going to check intonation, and then we'll be done with this thing. Okay, well, I've said this in other videos, but when you're checking intonation, what you're doing is you're comparing the uh, harmonic of the 12th fret of each string to the fretted 12th note so basically I have done all these except the G string and I, I've saved this one because it's usually the one that's kind of weird and gets uh, shoved back behind the rest of them but uh, tune your harmonic first that's pretty close you know on a tuner like this it jumps around quite a bit you almost have to you know pick your spots but that's pretty close and then my fretted note is quite a bit sharp um, so what I usually do is detune just a little bit just so I don't break the string and then tighten the screw what the tightening of the screw does is it brings the saddle back toward the back of the bridge and it lengthens the string I know it's off by quite a bit. I normally don't turn them that much, but I know it's off by a lot. See, it still needs more. So we'll keep going. I'm pretty sure it's going to end up behind the D string. So I'm just going to go there now. Oh, I'm real close now. Oh, it's so close. It just needs like a tiny touch. So close. Ridiculously close. Yeah, there it is. Okay, got it. So, you know, you do that on every string. If it's, uh, if the fretted note is sharp of the harmonic, on a strat style bridge you're going to tighten the, the screw. If it's uh, flat of the harmonic you're going to loosen the screw. And Remember when you're tightening the screw you're lengthening the string and when you're loosening the screw you're shortening the string. And uh, it should start to make sense with you sense you know in your head if you start to think about the string lengths especially from the 12th fret to the bridge and what that means when it's sharp or flat. You think through it a little bit and you'll get it, but that's intonation. I've got to do pickup height and I believe then I'm done with this guitar. Okay, so for pickup height, you want to set um, on a Strat usually about 5 64ths on the bass side and 4 64ths on the treble side. 
you can, you can vary that like a 64 deeper or so it just depends on your preference but um, you want to try to use the same spec across the board and then if one of the pickups seems louder than the others you can adjust that one down a little bit more but the way you check for proper pickup height is by fretting the last fret and then measuring the distance from the pole to the string. You can do that with a graduated ruler or I have simplified things and I, I've, I've been using Allen wrenches here recently to do this so I'll, I'll use a little 464 Allen wrench. Um, and I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I normally do uh, 564 on this side and 464 on this one. Um, so I'm just going to keep using my 464 and just use a little bit more space uh, in between the, the pole and the string on this side. But basically, you're going to tighten the string or tighten the screw until the string touches the Allen wrench. In my case, I'm going to back it off just a little bit to give myself another 64th. On this one, I'm going to tighten it. Yep, it looks like it's already there. So maybe I'll loosen it just a bit. Uh, it was pretty close already. So, anyway, uh, ended up with the string touching the Allen wrench on that side and that's the way I'm going to do it on each one. Now obviously when you're fretting this last note the string kind of ramps up a bit from the fretboard to the bridge and uh, you'll end up with this uh, pickup being a little bit lower than the last pickup so they kind of go they kind of ramp up as well. All right, well, that gives me a good starting point. Again, um, you go a little bit further away from the strings on the bass side than on the treble side. Um, and get yourself in the ballpark and then you can tune it by ear. All right, well, everything seems to be working out pretty well on this guitar now. Um, the pickups are relatively evenly loud and um you know it's it's a they're a little bit noisy in spots when you put them in the hum canceling positions the two and the four positions on the switch they do quiet down completely um i you know action aside you know this thing is pretty much set up how i would want it it's a little bit high on the action but that's necessary because of the neck issues um Intonation's perfect. The bridge height is good. I've got everything kind of set up the way I want it now. So, anyway, um, sorry it took me so long to finish this thing. Um, if you've been paying attention to this playlist, I think you'll notice it took me many, many weeks, uh, if not months, to finish this guitar. Um, I did have some sickness in there, but otherwise, it was really just because this thing fought me the whole way. Um, and it's never fun when you get a project like that. Um, you know, it's a good thing I'm not a luthier, and this is not a customer guitar. Uh, somebody would be mad at me if it took that long to finish. But anyway, I got there eventually. Uh, I just took took a little bit of effort. So um, if you like this project or if you like my other projects, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Um, click the like button on any videos you like, and of course leave a comment if you feel so inclined. But anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot for watching.